Rose, let's thank Rose. Awesome job. Let's thank Rose. Come on. Some some muscle in the church. Um, thanks, Sam. Legend. Um, uh, Super Family Sundays for uh, for um, uh, the people with families. <laughs> so, kids. Uh, Super Family Sundays is really an initiative in Manningham just to help uh, mums. And dads of uh, generally, you know, uh, generally, you know, younger, you know, primary school and high school age kids to, to help grow, uh, s- s- you know, their homes spiritually. And uh, how many know that we all need help growing our homes spiritually, right? Um, but that's something that we've been on for a while. So if that's you, then please uh, come along, and it's going to be great. So. Um, Today, uh, we're continuing our series on uh, stewardship, and, uh, and I love what Rose talked about last week, be a, be a steward and not a steward. Everybody remember that? Yeah? And, uh, and uh, if somebody has a friend called Stuart, we're not talking about your friend, and if your name is called Stuart, it's not that we don't want to be like you, we don't want to be like the minion called Stuart, Amen. And uh, all those who don't know what a minion is, it's, uh, we'll show you a bit later on what a minion is, but uh, it's great. Um, it's, uh, Anna and I are, are really glad to be uh, back home. We had a 3,000 kilometre round trip to Port Lincoln and back, and uh, I uh, was able to share in the church there uh, with, um, you know, share your heart and uh, our heart as a church for the community here. And uh, really just able to impact them. I, I believe in a great way. They told us it was impacting anyway. And, uh, and uh, they've had some uh, really great testimonies come out of uh, the time of ministry that we had uh, with them. God really showed up in an amazing way. And as we were driving into Port Lincoln, it was very, very dry. Uh, and uh, all the hay had uh, recent, I don't know how recent, but all the hay had certainly been cut. And, uh, and uh, it was very, very dry. Uh, but then as we were coming into Port Lincoln, and if you know where that is, it's about seven hours past Adelaide. Um, uh, and uh, I heard the voice of the Lord speak, and he says, you're coming into God's country. And uh, I know, and that doesn't mean we all have to move to Port Lincoln now. <laughs> Uh, because it's God's country. What it is, is that God has his eye on those who watch him. Amen? God has his eye on those that watch him. And uh, I heard just recently somebody say that that, uh, God watches the watch of those that watch him. You need to have a think about that. God watches the watch of those that watch him. In other words, as we keep our eyes focused and we keep our lives focused on him, he takes care of and watches our life. The the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, right? That he is righteous, that uh, though a righteous man falls seven times, seven times he'll get back up again. Is there anything about the seven? No. No. It's everything about the 100% that he's got you all every single step of the way. Amen? And in spite of uh, events that are happening around the world and, you know, recognise what, uh, what has happened in New Zealand, um, there are stories like that uh, uh, in the other way happening all around the world constantly where Christians are being persecuted. Um, it just gets to hit a little bit home when it's in a Western, more of a Western context, doesn't it? Um, but Christians around the world are facing this. China, we saw, um, we saw the underground church shown in The Finger of God too. Who was here for The Finger of God too? Just a fantastic film. And I'd encourage you, get a copy of it watch, it, watch it again. Because every single time I watch it, every single time, I am drawn to the truth that we are called into the greatest calling the world has ever seen. And that is to be the children of God. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about <coughs> stewardship, and this is week three. Uh, next week we are going to be, um, uh, <laughs> we might want to adjust that there, a prayer meeting can happen now if you like. Um, 
um, but uh, um, next week we're going to be talking and articulating exactly what it is as a church, as a whole, uh, as, a ch- as a church, as a whole, uh, to, uh, to carry and walk in that element of stewardship as a church. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the building, going to be talking a little bit about the, uh, the school initiative that we've got coming up and uh, that, well, has already uh, uh, started and a number of the visionary things that we've got planned. Is that cool? I had somebody turn up during the week and said, oh, I forgot there was new gardens here. Don't they look great? <laughs> Don't they look great? They look real, real, really good. And so uh, it was uh, as we work together and as we work collectively, then we can steward the call of God that uh, he has for this church. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And so I've entitled today, whilst it's, uh, it's on stewardship, I've entitled today, Carrying the Flame Called Resources. And how many know that we all have resources? We, we, you know, even if, uh, you know, you could be on a pension, you've got, you've still got resources. You could be, um, you know, completely retired with millions of dollars in the bank, you've still got resources. You could be flat broke, you've still got resources, you have life. As long as there's, as long as there's breath in my body, I have life. Uh, I had an old boss who was uh, anything uh, but Christian, and he said this. He would put it like this. He would said, "For as long as I point my butt to the ground," he said was his saying, and it means it's just as long as I'm up and going, as long as I'm going, uh, I will continue to press in. I will continue to live life and do all that I can. Can I get an amen? Um, so we have resources. And that is a bit like a torch and a flame. Every single resource that we have at our disposal is a bit like a torch and a flame that if you took one match into a dark cave, how many know that it would light up the cave? Right? And so it doesn't matter whether you've got a flaming torch or one single match, you have something called a resource. And I want to take a little bit of a different slant on resources. Most people would think that resources are all about finances. Um, Resources are all about maybe time. You know, uh, if uh, somebody, you know, wants to, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, Anna and I, uh, you know, it's just tough being so popular, you know. (laughs) If somebody wants to book a dinner... I'm just being real. Is that cool? Somebody wants to book a dinner um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, we've got to look in our diary and we go, well, I'm sorry, but it's going to be in two and a half months' time. <laughs> just simply because we've got to manage and prioritise our what? Resources. That's right. Yeah, so you were right, Sam, but resources is what I wanted to hear. And so can you guys please give me the feedback that I want to hear? I'm joking. And so... And so, um, and so uh, what I've tried to do in terms of today, and hopefully it succeeds. Can you just tell me, Matt, I hope it succeeds. Just tell me that back again. Is that Okay, thank you for that. I'm hoping it's going to succeed as well. But I've actually um, uh, uh, categorised our resources to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this is going to be interesting. Hey, all those people that love diagrams and graphs, isn't this great? Don't you love this, hey? All right? And so um, Maslow, uh, psychologist, and I'm no psychologist, okay? I know it might strike you as stunning, but uh, I'm no psychologist, and uh, to be quite honest, I'm no expert in this, but I'm going to get a message across, and I hope you catch it. Is that cool? So, psychologist Abraham Maslow, uh, in, in 1943, uh, came up with uh, something called Maslow's, what we know, now know as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is not the original of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is his revise that in roughly about 1980, uh, if I get my dates correct, he actually revised it close to his death because he started to add in this top section of which we'll explain, I'll explain in just a few moments. But uh, I'm just going to read something from my iPad and it's going to sound really intelligent. Is that ready? Are you ready? Is that cool? 
All right, so Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory in psychology comprising a five-tier model of human needs, often depicted as hierarchical uh, levels within a pyramid, as you can see, thus hence diagram A. From the bottom of the hierarchy upwards, the needs are physiological, safety, love and belonging, esteem, self and then self-actualisation. Needs lower down the hierarchy must be satisfied before... This is the theory that Maslow had. I'm not saying that this is absolute. This is the theory that he had. <coughs> needs lower down in the hierarchy must be satisfied before individuals can attend to needs higher up. So, as you can see down the bottom here, and be, be prepared to be wowed with my laser pointer. See that? Wow. wow. You ready on this side? Are you ready? <laughs> ready? I just have to go around the pot. Wow. wow. Like, I know you're in awe. And um, um, as, uh, as, as we can see, um, Maslow uh, had this theory, of which I'll show you a diagram in a, in a moment, of where the bottom half of the needs were known as he called them as deficiency needs, and then above that um, he called it growth needs. And so um, how many know that if you go without water for six months, you're going to be in quite great need? Right? You're going to be, I mean, over-exaggerating for effect, okay? So let's say six months you go on minimum food and everything like that. You don't need a self-esteem boost, <laughs> right? What you need is a big lasagna from my mother-in-law's, right? You probably wouldn't be able to stomach it right then and there. But how many know that you don't need a pat on the back if you're going without food for a very, very long time? What do you need? Food. You need sustenance, right? And so it's this sort of thing that deficiency needs. How many know, for example, in relation to safety, if your life feels threatened, you don't need a get well card? Hello? Right? Uh, if your life feels threatened, you don't need an icy pole. Well, everybody needs a good ice cream or something like that, right? Okay. Are you dead? Are you, are you there? Right. So, so, so how, how many need that if your life is threatened, you're, you, need, you need an answer to that? You need a result to that? Either you need to get into a safe place or you need somebody to get you into a safe place. Is that right? Okay, right. Thanks. So then, <clears throat> then as we go up, belongingness and love. Let's say you've got all your physiological needs met, which I think as I look around the room here, it appears to me that everybody's physiological needs are pretty much met. We live in a great country called Australia, uh, which is uh, a little different to Adelaide, uh, where you can actually have quality water. Whereas you go over to Adelaide, water is like, goodness gracious me, no wonder bottles water is selling such a, in such a great way. If you don't know what I'm talking about, drive to Adelaide and turn on the tap and taste it, all right? So, so um, and all the ladies, what's it like to wash your hair in Adelaide water? Oh, <laughs> but praise God, it's water that you can drink, amen, which is vastly different to many other parts of the world. But let's say, for example, uh, uh, we've, got, we've, got, we've got warmth, we've had rest, we've had more than a few hours sleep last night, uh, hopefully, uh, you've got water, you've had food. Has anybody, everybody had breakfast this morning, all right? Anybody not have breakfast, but it was a choice, okay? Like, well, yeah, sort of. Who got up early enough to have... No, I'm joking. So, um, so, so, and then there's safety needs. Let's say, you know, everybody feels safe. This is a safe environment, right? Right, right now, we are in a completely and totally safe environment. I did, that is absolutely it. It's spiritually safe. It's, uh, you are, nothing's happening to your health at the moment uh, out the front of uh, Templestowe Park Primary School in a park that we walk down into the entrance. There's all blue fences everywhere because they've found asbestos in the ground, in the children's playground, right? Not in the school. It's nothing to do with the school. It's everything to do with the council uh, being proactive to remove that danger. And so how many know there's no asbestos in here, as far as you know? 
No, I'm just letting you know there's no asbestos in here. And, you know, you're in com- a completely safe environment. In a few weeks' time, we're going to have a barbecue and run a trial fire evacuation. Why are we doing that? So that we can stay safe as a church, that in the case of an, in the event, uh, in, in the unlikely in the unlikely event of an emergency, you know where to go, right, to get out of here and get to safety. Is that, is that cool? So safety needs, all met, security, safety. Um, you know, we tidied up some things. We've, we're always working on the building here to make it as, possi- as safe as possible, right? So let's say all those safety, safety needs are met. Uh, belongingness and love. And so, you know, so that, that can be a matter of opinion sometimes, can't it? Because now we're talking about feelings. How do I feel? Do I feel loved? Do I feel appreciated? Uh, do, I, do I feel uh, is that I have some quality relationships? Um, do I have some quality friends? Do, am I met in that sense? Then we go to the esteem needs. So let's say we've got all of these bottom three bottom three needs met, all right, then we get into our esteem needs. Am I feeling life like my life matters? Do I matter? Am what I doing, right? Am what I am am doing is making a difference? You know what I mean, right? (laughs) I'm already thinking about the other two while, I'm try- while the mouth is trying to catch up, okay? So, so prestige and feeling of accomplishment. You know, is, 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 and do I feel like my life matters, right? Am I completing, am I meeting something? And so <clears throat> as we get to the top, self-actualization is the achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. Now, might, might I, can I say to you that um, most people never get to that level? Most people stop at the esteem needs because most people still struggle with loving themselves. You see, this is why Jesus said, love yourself. Love your neighbour as yourself. It's hard to love our neighbour unless we know how to love ourselves. And so here, most people stop at this prestige and they get stuck at this feeling of accomplishment. Well, I've got an answer for you. You have, you have a resource, a spiritual resource that's called thankfulness. You see, a spiritual resource called thankfulness adjusts your perspective and you stop focusing upon the things that you think are a detriment to you and what happens is you position yourself in a heaven, heavenly currency called praise and you actually begin to be thankful for what you have. Then as you are thankful for what you have, you actually start to feel more esteemed. You actually start to have a different perspective on life. You actually become a person people want to hang around. Whereas if you have a low self-esteem, often most of the time, is if you have a low self-esteem, you have a low self-perception, and so therefore, which, what's, what's a low self, self-perception? It's an identity issue, isn't it? Well, my Bible declares who you are. My Bible declares who I am. And I'd rather believe that than focus on my own navel where all I find is dirty lint. Hello? And you see, as we look at this esteem area, this is where most people get stuck. In their lint-filled navel. Because they become so conscious of where they think they are rather than aligning themselves with who God says you are. Hello? Because a person cannot change their esteem by themselves. We're not designed that way. You can make a choice, but you see, we need the Holy Spirit to change and adjust our identity, our identity in Christ, and then we can move up into this very powerful quadrant uh, not a quadrant, that's the top of the pyramid, um, 
up into this very powerful area and it's called self-actualization. See, all of these are resources at your disposal. Let's have another look at it. Same, just simplified, right? Here, I talked about the deficiency needs and the being, the growth needs. So in order to really grow, we need to step into that self-actualization, right? On the left-hand side of that diagram, you can see the, the statement, motivation decreases as needs are met. How many know and can see that that's quite dangerous? Hello? So let's go back, let's go back to not eating for three months. You're going to be very motivated to find some food. Correct? Right? Even the Bible said, if a, if, 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 if a guy, if a person steals a loaf of bread because he's, he needs to, uh, you know, feed his family, let him steal it. Let him pay it back, but let him steal it. Why? Because God's heart is in condemnation. God's heart is to see the family taken care of. Hello? So here we have a resource. We have as a church the responsibility to see the community resourced physiologically. We actually contain that resource. You contain that resource. What does that resource look like? Let's, let's say, for example, we'll take the whole food aspect. Let's say, uh, let's say, um, uh, let's say we um, uh, have an emergency food program. of where we identify needs within the community and then we meet that need. How many know that that's a resource? Hello? All right. Let's look at safety. Let's look at the safety area. Let's say a woman, or a man for that matter, somebody is in an abusive marriage and they need out. I'm not talking about divorce, but they need to get from an unsafe unsafe place to a safe place. Do you know that as a church, we can answer that call? Why? Because we have a resource. What's our resource? Well, I've got a spare bed. Have you got a spare bed? Have you got a room? Have you got a bit, a bit of carpet that you can put a mattress down? So that somebody... And listen, I'm not saying long term. I'm not saying move in for six years. I'm, I'm saying get out of that dangerous space into a safe place so you can just have a good night's sleep. You have a resource. And to be a good steward with that resource, God calls us to respond to these needs in the community as a church. Man, this is so good. It gives us so much direction as people, doesn't it? Because it actually opens our eyes that we can start to identify needs in the community and go, well, I, ca I can't meet that one, but I, gee, I can meet that one. Hello? Next one, love and belonging. Well, can you give love? Can you, can you build somebody up? Now, remember what I said beforehand. Most people cannot change their own esteem on their own. Because human beings are designed relationally. We need to be in relationship together. Hello? So because we need to be in right relationship together, then we can encourage each other and walk into and step into this resource called love, this resource called belonging. We can all do that, right? Have you got love to give? Can you help somebody feel welcome? Hello? Yeah? Some people you might, it, it's a challenge to welcome them. <laughs> Hello? But, you, but everybody can feel welcome. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> when we get to esteem, here is a beautiful and amazing thing. Because we have a resource, we have the resource called the Word. 
And when somebody says, walks in and says, I'm a loser, they don't actually say that, they say that through other things. They may not take care of themselves like they could. They may not be, you know, in their thinking or in their choice of words. But no one comes in with a big sign saying, I'm a loser. Hello? Right? We, as the church, as people in the church, we can help them say, hey, you are not a loser. Hey, God loves you. Hey, you are a child of the most high and living God and you are called into greatness. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you are today. But I know that tomorrow God calls you up into, you are a powerful being. You are a devil chaser. Hello? You, you have authority over the enemy. Hello? Hey, yeah, you've got a story and people need to hear it. Hello? You've got a testimony of where God took you from this place here into a magnificent, beautiful place of greater victory. Hello? That is what, that is a resource for us and it's called esteem. We can change somebody's esteem. Hello? Then here is this resource called self actualization. In fact, before we get there, as these lower physiological safety, love, belonging, and esteem, as these needs are met, then the human nature is that we become more content. Therefore, our motivation decreases. But in Christ, we have a greater calling than just to meet our own needs. We have a calling that our motivation, that, that, that our motivation actually steps into a beautiful place of sonship, daughtership, servanthood, where we step into that place of, God, I'm just going to serve you. Thank you for meeting all of these other needs. Thank you for meeting all of those things. Now you've actually set me free to be able to serve you well. And let me just point out something. If you were to go over into a third world country or a developing nation or something like that, I, I know that you actually find people more motivated, more motivated than those in relation to this and often in relation to the things of God, those people are often more motivated than people in a Western culture. Why? Well, it's, it comes easy to us, right? Food comes easy, safety comes pretty easy, you know, all those other things, love, you know, if you weren't loved from Monday to Saturday, if you came in here on a Sunday, at least you'd feel loved once, once a week, right? Hello? It's not enough, but at least you'd feel loved and accepted at church. Well, that's the way I would hope that you would feel. Hello? But you see, when it's into, when, when we're when in a, a, a third world nation, if you call a prayer meeting, then 3,000 people will turn up. Why? Because they're highly motivated. They have things in right balance because they go, without prayer, I can't do anything. Without God, my very survival and, and existence depends upon it. Whereas in a Western culture, that's not so much the case. Yeah, without God, it sounds good and I'll give an amen to Matt when he says it. But the next prayer meeting, <laughs> does that make sense? I think I've made my point. But then if we can improve our motivation through these uh, bottom rung of things from physiological needs up to esteem, if we can improve our, improve, and I'm not saying absolutely get perfect, I'm, so, I'm just saying, hey, if we can all commit to just simply improving our motivation of being a son and a daughter and a servant of the Most High and Living God, if we can improve our motivation of doing that, we can actually get into this area of self actualization where we begin to affect change in others because we are ourselves are growing in things like spiritual fruit, spiritual gifts, the word of the Lord, understanding that. Amen? Hello? So, 
Here is another version of it. Well, not that one, but I'll go with that one. How's that? We are carrying the flame called resources. We are called... I, I just want, to, want you to imagine right now that you are all holding like a flaming torch. And in that flaming torch, it's the power of the Holy Spirit, we all carry resources that can meet the very fundamental and basic needs of humanity. Friends, this is what the church is called to. The church is the hope of the world. Hello? See, friends, we just came out of a series called I Love My Church. You know why I love my church? You know why I love the church? Because in amongst all the church, we have all the resources we ever need. And I can, I can fall into the trap of going, oh, it'd be just so much easier if we, if we had a kid's playground. You know, it'd be so much easier if we had this, if we had that. But no, friends, we have everything we need to affect change within this community. We have everything that we need to see those that are lost and dying in the world come into a place of, of being fed, being into a place of being loved, come into a place of feeling safe, come into a place. We have all those resources at our disposal. We have it. We have it. So we are carrying the flame called resources. So I've already touched on this. The resources that we have already, food, water, warmth, and rest. You know you can actually give somebody rest? Hello? You can actually give somebody rest. You can actually give somebody rest by, by for example, this. If, if somebody's just had a baby, how many know how many remember or how many can imagine that having a baby is a tiresome thing, right? Like I've never physically given birth. No, no, I haven't done that. But I can imagine that's pretty tired, tiring, I should say. I can imagine that. Women, I can't imagine what you go through. Like I understand it, but I, I don't know it, okay? Is that cool? Is that fair to say? Uh, I take my hat off, my bank account, it's all yours. You know what I mean? It's like everything. Like I worship the feet, the, the feet. I worship the ground you walk on, right? But the point is, let's say somebody's had a baby and, you know, they're pretty tired. Dad's been up all night doing the feeding and, and uh, you know, there's, uh, and mum's been up all night, you know, doing whatever women do and, and, um, and, and, you know, dad's working through the day. You know that we can actually give somebody rest by just simply making a meal for them, dropping it around. Hey, what time are you going to be home? Oh, you're always home because you just got a kid. No worries. Oh, you can't go out and go shopping and go do some things that you would normally do. Oh, okay, no worries. Look, I'll, I'll drop a meal around. Can we do that? Yes. Can we do that? But we can't do that until we open our eyes to need. And often our, our heart is to do those sorts of things, to care. Often our heart is, you know, sometimes I hear people's needs and things that have gone and say, oh man, why didn't you tell me? Has, have you had that res response as well? Why didn't you tell me? And so sometimes it's just about knowing. But sometimes it's about us having initiative. How many know that you can see when a woman's pregnant? Like a woman is either pregnant or they're not. Is that right? You can't be half and half. And then suddenly that stomach mostly disappears. Something's happened there. Mm, I can't quite pick it. You're pushing a pram as well. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm just using this as an example that sometimes our eyes need to be open to needs that are greater than just our own. Hello? In the community. You walk, somebody, you walk past somebody that's limping. Hey, there's a need. You walk some, past somebody that's looking a bit dull in their face, there's a need. There's a need. You walk some, past somebody who's got a bigger smile on their face than you have on yours, you have a need. Open your eyes to it. Hello? 
food, water, warmth, and rest. You can actually give those things, security and safety. These are resources that we have. And to be correct and proper stewards of the kingdom of God, we have to understand the resources at our disposal that everybody has to give. You can show love, you can show relationship, you can show that you are a friend, you can be a friend. I love what Proverbs says. I, I, you know, I, well, I love all of it, but I love what he says. It says, if a man wants friends, he ought to show himself friendly. <laughs> right? Is that good? Yeah. Right. And so prestige and the feeling of accomplishment. Man, we can, there are resources at our disposal. When I look out upon all your faces, your faces radiate with prestige. Have you ever thought about that? Because you're just flipping fine. You're just so good looking. You have prestige. You got good clean haircuts, good clean face. You have prestige. You had a shower either last night or this morning or something, maybe last week, I don't know, but you've got prestige. Man, you can show people how to live because you know how to live. Hello? Achieving full potential and creatively living. Wow. Wow. Man, that is, that, is, that is about six months of sermons just in that. Achieving your full potential and creatively living. So, we should have some, have some scripture, right? Is that cool? Um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. If you've got your Bibles, open to it. 1 John. 1 John. Sure, I put it here. Anybody got it? Do you want to read it for me? Big loud voice. Yeah, keep going, Pete. I just love your dulcet tones. I'm just going to pause you there for a moment, mate. Just give Peter a hand. Come on. Awesome there, Pete. <clears throat> this verse 20 is very interesting. It says... For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. What that says is that even if we don't think we can do it, God says he can. Even if our heart says, no, nah, I just can't do that, I can't cope with that, right? I, no, I can't do that. God says, hey, 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 don't live by like a mere human. Live supernaturally. Walk supernaturally. Because you've got it. Because he's got it. Amen? So uh, trust Without doubting, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, says this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In other words, you have to be believing in order to have hope and joy. Most times that you lose hope and joy, it's because our belief is challenged. I heard it just recently said that most times when we lose hope and joy, it's because our belief is challenged. I heard it just a few moments ago that most times, why? Because we step into, we step into that place of doubt. 
We begin to question ourselves. And look, sometimes questioning ourselves is good. Sometimes we spend a lot of Sunday sermon, you know, just trying to uh, adjust our belief system, right? But when we believe in God, we will be filled with joy and peace. Then it goes on to say that you may abound in hope that you may abound. In other words, overflow with. Be walking in continual hope. Not a vain hope. Why? Because you have belief in God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whose power? Not mine, not yours. What power? The Holy Spirit. Amen? Right. So, love without partiality. That is a challenge in a vain Western society. Where so many times we are judged on our looks, we judge ourselves on how we look, rather than judge, judging ourselves by the very thing that God calls us to judge with, and that is love. See, everything has to be seen through the lens of love. Yeah? Sometimes we've just got to clean that lens a little bit because it's been marred by some road grime of life. Love without partiality. Trust without doubting. Romans 15, 13 that we just looked at. So, to be a steward and not a steward, we must equip ourselves and equip others. That's actually the resources that we have at us. We've already talked about all the resources that every single person has in this room. You've got all those to meet needs within a human life. To, to be a steward, we must see that we are equipped ourselves and in equipping ourselves often we find that we also should be equipping others. We must engage in increase. How many know that it's too easy to be content? Now, I know that Paul says in the Bible, be content. <laughs> no, he actually says, I know what it is and I'm content when I'm living in abundance or when I'm living in lack. It's about being, yes, content, but it is also that area of motivation that we talked about in Maslow's hierarchy of needs is that our motivation must always be for more. How many want more of God? Yeah? How many know that God's got more to give? How many know that in a church service, I want to see more of God move? Hello? Hello? Man, I, I uh, was talking with somebody just recently who was actually in um, Reading, uh, in the, the Bethel Church in Reading, when a glory cloud appeared in the room. And it was down the front. And out of that glory cloud, water started coming out of. And like they actually sent people up, maybe there was a, a, you know, a fire sprinkler or something like that that was uh, you know, faulty or... You know, I've never heard of a faulty one. Somebody might be able to correct me on that one. But, but you, know, it, you know, no, it was definitely coming out of this cloud. How many know that uh, God will move in signs and wonders? And they're signs that make you wonder. You don't have to understand it all, friends. In fact, it's better that you don't try because God is beyond our understanding. He says you can't, that we can't comprehend the manifold wisdom of God. Because our brains are so, look, you're powerful, but our brains are so puny compared to him. Hello? We must always look for more. Engage, actively engage in increase. Actively engage in increase in your life. And it's not about just the pursuit of more. It's about the pursuit of increase of effectiveness, increase of fruit, increase in those areas of things that we need. Increase in peace, increase in love. You know, some of the weightier matters of life. Walk in unity. 
with clear intent and vision. Love with understanding, need, trust, knowing that Holy Spirit is in charge. Amen? You'll see a wall there. The Bible says this, that we're all living stones fitted together in the house of God. See this here? There's not one stone that's exactly the same shape, but it makes a gorgeous wall. Guess what? For us to understand and be able to walk in the resources, we need to understand that we've all got different gifting, that not all of us are going to have it all, but all of us together have it all. And you see, as God fits us together, and sometimes in that fitting, there's a bit of a squeeze. Sometimes he needs to knock the sharp edge off somewhere. Somewhere he needs to just sort of mould us and change us just a little bit. And sometimes that's really painful. Can I get an amen? But hey, it is just so necessary. Because as we go through that process, there's the fulfilment of Scripture that says that we are all living stones fitted In other words, no one can fulfill the spot in the wall that you take. Only you can. Only you can. It's only just made uniquely for you because there's no other you ever made. Amen? Somebody just recently had a vision of the church here and... um, and, the, and I felt that it was really, really good and I hope it'll, uh, it'll give, give some uh, uh, closure to this, uh, to this message. But the vision was of a rowing boat and, um, uh, and uh, the vision was that we were all in a rowing boat and we're all rowing. And, you know, for some people, you know, some people have a small oar, some people have a big oar, some people have a slightly bent one. Some people have a different shape one. Some people can really pull on it hard and it really be f- super effective. Some people are just sort of, well, you know, I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing it for the team. Um, and, you know, then there was kids in the boat and they were rowing and, and they were doing their bit. And some of the kids actually had really big oars and that were more effective than some of us guys, right? And, and, and you know, they're rowing and, and everybody's rowing and... and, and, and then, uh, as, as you see, no one rowing can actually see the direction that they're going. And looking at the direction was not actually most important. The most important thing was the fact that everybody was rowing together. Because the Holy Spirit, who is the, what's known as the coxswain, is facing the right way, calling, row, row, row. And the Holy Spirit's moving the little rudder on the back of that oar, on the, on, on the back of, of the canoe. What are they? Boat, the floating thing on the water. The Holy Spirit's guiding that. And you see, that's a picture of us right now. That we're all rowing. We're all pulling. We've all got to be pulling together. Amen? We've all got to run in our own lane because no one else can run your race. Only you can. But if you stay committed to pulling when you've got to pull, to row in the right way, you've got to row. What happens if we don't? What happens if we're all doing our own thing? The boat's going to be like this and the Holy Spirit's trying to... Like, like, you know, he can just sink the thing if he wants, <laughs> right? He can make us go around in circles if we want. But if one side of everybody is rowing, what's going to happen? There's going to be a turn. <laughs> if, the, if the other side is the only one that's rowing, then it's going to go off. And the Holy Spirit will be fighting the direction of those that are not pulling their weight. This is why I was so excited about the working bee. And how many people helped out? See, the number one goal was not to get things achieved. The number one goal was community. Because as a community, we came together as a church and we pitched in and we made a difference, amen? Imagine what we can do in the community when we start to walk in some of these things. Listen, the picture is this. The Holy Spirit is directing us. There's a saying in rowing, a power 10 or 
a power 20. Not everybody can row at full speed for the entire time. But when the Holy Spirit, who's the coxswain at the back, says, power 10, what do you think that is? That's when everybody gives 10 power strokes that they pull as hard as they can for 10 strokes. The Holy Spirit might say, power 20 during worship. And the worship leader's up here going, rock and roll, yeah, let's just sing praises to the Lord. It's like saying, a power 20. Everybody, let's pull in. Everybody, let's pull hard and give praises to the Lord. That you can't sustain that for an hour, not yet. But you might be able to... You might be able to sustain it for 20 strokes where you give it your all during worship and you just go, yes, Lord. And then you feel the Holy Spirit ebb in and you feel the Holy Spirit start to flow through. Amen? Amen? Can you see the picture? (sighs) Carry, we are called to carry the flame called resources. You are called to carry your flame of the resources that we've talked about today, you can meet those needs in the community. Can we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us this morning? Is that cool? Let's stand up on our feet. I'm going to quickly close. Praise God.